Hello guys, it's Johnny Time and welcome to another smart contract hacking tutorial. Today we're going to solve the second challenge in Eternaut, which is Fallout. And we're going to solve it using Foundry. So you get two birds, one shot, smart contract hacking CTF plus mastering Foundry. Now, if you didn't watch the previous videos, the first video in this series is how to start with Eternaut and how to set up your Foundry local environment to solve the challenges. So make sure to watch this first video and obviously subscribe to the channel for more amazing tutorials. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So in the second challenge, Fallout, we have one objective, which is claiming ownership of the contract below to complete this level. And this is the Fallout smart contract. So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy this smart contract and paste it in my local Foundry folder, Foundry environment. And here in my Eternaut Foundry Solutions Johnny Time, which you can clone from GitHub, or you can watch the first video to see how we set it up and how we're gonna solve challenges using Foundry. I'm gonna create inside the SRC folder, the smart contract fallout.sol, and I will paste all the smart contract code. Here I'm gonna add a new comment with my objectives. So we have only one objective, which is claim ownership on the contract. Okay, so let's see what we have here in this smart contract. So this contract called Fallout, we use safe math. It's Solidity old version that is vulnerable to overflows and underflows. So we use safe math. We have here a mapping of allocations. We have the owner and we have here a constructor. So this is the constructor. Now in Solidity older versions, instead of using the keyword constructor, we use the smart contract name as the function of the constructor function. And this is the constructor. And we can see that upon construction, the owner is being set to message sender. We want to see if there is another function that changes the owner. So we're gonna search for owner. We have a modifier. We have only owner modifier protected function, but we don't have any other function that updates the owner. And actually we cannot execute the constructor because we are not the one who are deploying this smart contract, this level instance, but the Ethernet factory smart contract is going to deploy this level and this smart contract. So how are we going to change the ownership of the smart contract if we are not the ones who are running the constructor? Now, before we move on and I will tell you the solution for this challenge, I want you to pause this video and try to think yourself and try to activate your attacker mindset and see how you can hack the contract. And if you find it a bit challenging and you want to take your smart contract hacking skills and auditing skills to the next level, you should definitely check out our complete smart contract hacking course, which comes with 30 different chapters and more than 50 hands-on exercises, just like this one with walkthroughs, but more guided, more hands-on and more advanced. And by completion of the course, you will receive a certificate, official smart contract hacker certificate that will help you to showcase your skills and increase your chances of landing your first smart contract security researcher job. On top of that, you get access to the best Web3 security community where you can interact with other students and other professionals, ask questions, make connections, and embark on this amazing journey together. Get a special discount code by clicking the link in the description below. So if we look a bit deeper on this constructor function, we actually see that it's not a constructor because it's not written with two L's like the contract name, like Fallout, but we have one L and the number one which means that this is actually not a constructor, but just a normal public payable function. So this function will not be triggered upon, on, upon deployment and the owner initially is gonna be set to address zero because it's not gonna be executed. But we, as the player account, as the attacker account, we can trigger manually this function to set the owner to our account, to the message sender account. And this is exactly what we are going to do. So let's solve this challenge. The first thing I'm going to do is to copy the previous solution file and paste it in the script folder to get a template. And I'm going to rename it from fallback solution 
copy to just fallout solution.s.so. And this will be our script file that will execute and it will interact with the Fallout smart contract and try to exploit it. So let's change some things from the previous challenge to this new challenge. Instead of fallback, we're gonna import the Fallout smart contract. The smart contract name is gonna be Fallout Solution. We are gonna use the Fallout smart contract. So I'm gonna change it here and this will be Fallout. We need to deploy the instance of this smart contract and we will deploy it in a second and get the address and we can remove all this code that is actually solving the previous challenge that we don't need. We will keep the VM start broadcast with our private key and the stop broadcast because we want to make sure to send the transaction to the Gorelli blockchain with our player account, with our private keys that is being retrieved from the environment variable. Again, if you are not sure about this command and about this private key, watch the first video where I'm explaining how we are setting up our Foundry repository and our environment. The next thing I want to do is go to the website and get a new instance. So I will submit a transaction with my MetaMask wallet and it will be submitted and now it will request a new instance. The transaction is being mined and the transaction was submitted and now we have an instance address. This is the smart contract that we need to interact with and exploit that will have this code. So I'm just going to copy here the instance address and paste it here in my script file. Now here we need to write our exploitation. So the only thing that we need to do is just call this symbol fallout function. Fallout with one instead of L. But for our nice output, before calling the function, the first thing I want to do is first I want to see who is the owner of the smart contract before we call the fallback function, fallout function, and who is the owner after we call the fallout function. So first I'm gonna add here a console.log owner before, then I'm gonna print the owner of the smart contract, so fallout instance.owner. And then I will do here owner after, and again I'm gonna print the owner, and in the middle I'm gonna trigger the fallout function. So we'll do a fallout instance dot fall. Let's just copy it just for the sake of it. So we won't have any mistakes. And I'm just going to call this function and see if the owner is being updated after we call this function. Now we'll go to the terminal, clear it, and then run forge script. And I will run the script of the fall out solution. Yeah, we have an issue because here the solution file is Solidity version 0.8 and this one is 0.6 and it cannot work together. So we're going to change it to 0.6 and try to run the script again. And now what's going to happen behind the scene is that the foundry going to fork go early testnet blockchain to our local environment and try to simulate the transaction of the script. So it compiles the file and going to create a fork and simulate the transactions. Beautiful, we can see that before we call the fallout function, the owner is address zero, and after calling the fallout function, we are the owners of the smart contract. You can go to your MetaMask wallet or to your Envile to validate that this is your player account. Now, this is the gas cost, and we can see that the simulation completed, and now in order to send it to the actual blockchain, we'll need to add here the broadcast command. So now we run the same transaction, but the difference is that we're using the Anchor RPC to broadcast it to the Gorelli blockchain. And the transaction submitted, now we're waiting for one receipt for confirmation. And the transaction was mined and confirmed. And now I can go to the website and try to submit the instance because we're supposed to be the owners of the smart contract and achieve the objective and the required state. The transaction was submitted. We will wait and see if we were actually able to solve the second Eternaut challenge. We did it, guys. Well done. We completed the second level of Eternaut. Now we can click here, go to the next level. And I can't wait for you to try the next one, which is the coin flip. If you enjoy this challenge, if you solve it, make sure to smash the like button so more people can enjoy from this video. And obviously, subscribe to the channel so you can enjoy all the awesome tutorials that I'm going to post in the future or the ones that I posted in the past. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next tutorial.